Collections at risk can be very simply defined for me as any collection at all. Because if you have a collection in your garage, as I was very personally very aware, if you have a, a very large collection, whether it's in, even in a filing cabinet, all you need is for a pipe to burst in your loft and that collection is gone, could be gone. The house, heaven help us, could go on fire or any number of natural events could happen out with your control. So by definition, I think as soon as you assemble a collection, it is at risk. First tip would be get volunteers to help with the, uh, with the organization. Volunteers are vital. You need volunteers to help you process the collections that you have. Get outside support if you need it. If you don't have the, the specific knowledge to curate things yourselves, get that outside support and the Sporting Heritage is a great place to start. I would say ensuring that it's stored and packed correctly, so you're using proper materials that are museum grade, so acid free, so there's no deterioration to the actual physical elements of the object. Obviously to care for something in a conservation grade way can sometimes need an investment of money. Organisations have to care for their collections within what is realistic within their budget and there are lots of different ways of doing that. Obviously what we hold in our collections in Sporting Heritage and Armed Forces organisations aren't designed to last forever. Quite a lot of it is paper material which over time deteriorates. So it's making sure that items are kept in a certain way so that we try and slow down that deterioration so that those items are there for future generations to enjoy. You need to triage them. So in other words, you need to say which is the really important stuff. Almost do an A, B and a C categorisation. This is the really A stuff, the A list of stuff. And then tell your resources accordingly. So it's important then if you've got a limited amount of resources, save the resources for your best stuff. One certainly is finding a responsible place where they can be stored because one of the biggest uh, at-risk things is if collections are just in damp lofts or in, in, in conditions where they're not being looked after. We're really lucky at Rugby League to have an amazing archive at Heritage Quay. So I think finding that, and if you can't find that, I think it's about understanding what's there, cataloguing, scoping, making sure that people are aware of what's out there and looking at ways in which that can be protected against, looking at ways in which you can start making sure that they're in suitable places and being looked at as well as looked after. Make sure you know what you have. So many organisations hold collections and when you go and ask them about what they hold, they say, oh, we've got it somewhere. I was like, oh, but if I wanted to come in and see that today, where would you find it? Oh, I'm not quite sure. So. I think to be a good custodian, even if you do nothing else, you need to know what you hold. Because only from then can you start to do research, understand the value, whether it's a social, cultural, financial value of your collection, and then work out how best to preserve it. So I quite often work with museums and help them catalogue their collections. And it could be something as simple as numbering everything and listing it, but then you can go on and do more complicated cataloguing that's set out in various standards that either come from the museum or the archive community. Access for me is hugely important. That's the reason that we do any of this work, because if, you're not, if people can't look at and, and use a collection, what's the point anyway? But making sure that access is managed appropriately is really important. I have a view about three things to do with access. You have physical access, intellectual access, and emotional access. Your physical access is getting up close and personal with the objects, so standing there and seeing an object in a case. The second one is intellectual access, understanding how an object is important and where it fits into the history of some story we're trying to tell. Third thing is most important, emotional access. It's that ability for an object to elicit some kind of emotional response in somebody where they might think, oh God, that's an ugly object, or wow, I wonder what the story is behind that. So it's knowing what you've got, knowing how to look after it, knowing who it's for, knowing who, who, who you can work with to exploit it to the best of its ability. I think another important tip for managing collections is knowing who else is interested, finding partners to work with you um, so that together you can do the best for management of the collection. I think sometimes as professionals we don't like to 
ask for help because we, we you know people expect you to know everything there is to know but I think actually sometimes one of the, the hardest things to do and sometimes one of the best things to do is go and approach somebody else because you never know you might end up with a, a nice bit of partnership working coming out of it and they'll tell you things about the, your collection that you never knew. My final point would be I think never to stop collecting. I think it's as simple as that and I think most people who have been involved with collections will understand what I mean. As soon as you start building a collection, you want to make it bigger, better uh, and more expansive and as, as long as you maintain that willingness to spend time in it, I think it will be a successful collection at the end of the day.